Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4. Now in this video we are going to be doing a brand new episode of Stock vs. Tuned but it's going to be a pretty interesting one because we are going to be racing a tuned Carrera GT against a stock Hennessy Venom GT. Now, these cars are both very fast in their own right, but I really wanted to get the Carrera GT into a episode, and I also figured that since these cars both had a manual gearbox, what better time to get out my wheel and shifter and show you guys my horrible shifting? But no, actually, these cars were really, really fun to drive with a wheel and a shifter. If you want to check them out, I highly recommend you giving them a look. I'll leave a link in the description below uh, to where you guys can check these things out. And I want to give a big thank you to Thrustmaster for sending me over the wheel, uh, the wheel rim, the gear, the like the shifter the handbrake all of that stuff thrustmaster have been awesome and like i said i want to thank them for sponsoring this gear now without any further ado i'm really excited to get into this battle and i hope you guys are too and uh let's go ahead and get into it but before we do before we do that Make sure to leave your suggestions for cars that we should race in this series in the comment section below so that we don't miss them and also so that you guys can get your suggestions out there and make sure that I see them. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the Hennessy Venom GT. Now, this car was wild to drive with a wheel, and I drove it with a controller in one of my previous episodes where I raced it against a heavily modified Lotus Elise, but... Driving this thing with a wheel and three pedals and a shifter is a totally different experience. And you'll see right off the bat here. I mean, like, I wanted to leave the first few, like, like literally, I wanted to leave the video footage in from when I very first started driving the car because it's very, very different from most cars that you would drive uh, on a wheel and pedal setup. I mean, you just feel... Not necessarily overwhelmed, but you just feel like you have to be extra careful with every single input. I mean, you bang shift a gear, you know, between f first and third the wrong way, and it's just immediately, it's just immediately slithering all over the road. Now, when I took it into the, yeah, hello traffic car, when I took it into the roundabout... I wanted to try to slide it around a little bit and give it some throttle, and you'll see later on in the video that the Carrera GT was actually a little easier to maintain a, a slide with. It wasn't easy, but it was easier than the Venom GT. The Venom GT is just kind of like, once it goes, it, it runs out of steering angle so fast that there's there's such a small margin for correction. I mean, you can correct it, but if you also don't bring it back quick enough, it immediately goes the opposite direction. So it's a very weird car to try to go sideways in. But doing our launch, I honestly decided to just do a super basic, like super basic clutch dump launch. No crazy fancy launch control here. Just revved it up, dumped the clutch, and just modulated the throttle through first and second, and it still slammed the rev limiter. I had to lift and get back on it in third to get it to grab traction. I mean, it's that wild, and it's that all over the place. But then again, it's that personality that gives this car the, the reputation it has. And we crossed the trap at 221.8 miles an hour, which is very, very, very fast for something stock. Now, the Carrera GT, I'm not going to give you any spoilers. I'm not going to tell you what it ran stock, but I will tell you that it's definitely not going to be that fast. Although, the Carrera GT was actually quite impressive to me uh, in terms of stock performance. I mean, it was kind of one of those things that was like, wow, this car is considered old now. This car is considered, like, to have long had its day, you know, long since had its day. But it's still actually, it still actually really puts up a good fight for itself, even stock. So, switching over to the Carrera GT, one of the biggest things that you notice is the incredible change in exhaust sound. I mean, just listen to this. I had to rev it. I mean, I had to just sit there and rev it in neutral. It was so... It's such an iconic sound that you really just can't get away from it. Now, um, it's weird because the game, the way the game works, and if you've never played with a uh, with an actual shifter before, basically what the game does with some of these cars is it will kind of, some cars you can shift faster than others, like it will let you shift faster than others. And in the Venom GT, I didn't have any issues. 
whereas in this, uh, the game the game basically told me that I grinded uh, a couple of different gears, and I'm not sure why. I'm I haven't really I haven't really figured that out yet. But it's more like the game wants you to shift this car a little bit on the slow side and a little bit on the gentle side, which I kind of got used to after a while, but. There are just a couple of gear grinds in there because I was trying to shift it like I shifted the Venom and you just, this car doesn't like it. This car doesn't like to be shifted that way. But as you can see, it's a lot easier to catch than the Venom was. It's a hell of a lot easier to catch than the Venom was, but it also, in stock form, has a lot less power than the Venom. But I will say it runs out of steering angle pretty quick. And also, if you put your rear tires, you know, off the road, then you're, you're not really off to a good start and you end up running into some road signs. Now, gearing up to do this run, I made sure to back up straight into a traffic car because no speed run is complete without doing that. It caught traction in second. I am I expected it to catch traction in second. I mean, I figured it would spin first, grab in second, but it's just such a crazy sounding car. I mean, I actually have a bunch of leftover footage from just driving around and doing like, you know, pulls and ripping on the highway because I just wanted to hear this car and I just wanted to actually have that experience of using the shifter when it was connected to that sound. I mean, it's just such an insane sound. And I just like, I just keep going. I had to like, I had to just tell myself I have to cut the rest of this and just go back, like actually go back to the shop so we can have an actual video. But what an insanely satisfying car to drive with a wheel and a shifter. Like, just incredible sound and an incredible, like, experience. I mean, you put a set of really good head, like, really good headphones on and, you know, a wheel setup and a shifter setup, you're going to just spend hours driving this car around. I mean, at least, at least I would. So now back to the shop. So the build for this car was pretty simple. I mean, it's already got race uh, suspension on it, so we didn't have to touch the suspension. We reduced, um, we reduced the weight as much as we could. And then as far as drivetrain goes, we actually left the stock transmission and did a race diff. And my thinking with that was I kind of I, I like the character that the stock transmission has and I think it's got some like really good ratios and I figured the ratios would be good still even if we upped the power so that's why I stuck with it however if you wanted to make a top speed build then obviously you would you would switch that transmission out but I figured for the for the speed trap that we were going for I figured that the, the stock transmission would be able to give us enough room now I didn't look at the virtual like dyno or anything like that to check the top speed but just in the little bit that I did look at it was kind of like oh, okay cool like this should be this should be fairly doable you know what I mean so going through the build I did decide that a rear wing was maybe not necessarily pretty but necessary and I actually I backed away from doing it at first but I went back and put one on later because it just kind of kept you know getting in my head I was like you know what we're probably going to want the downforce. We're probably going to want it. Now, there's no way I was going to swap the engine in this car. The engine in this car is way too special to swap it out. Although, if you did want to, the game gives you the option of putting a 918 engine in it, which would be absolutely mental and crazy, but I still wouldn't want to take that V10 out. I mean, I would have to have two of them. I would have to have this one that I used for, you know, the stock engine or used with the stock engine. And then I would have to have another one that I used with a, uh, with a swap. So I feel like at the same time though, I mean, I feel like the swapped one would just not be anywhere near as special as the one with the stock engine. I mean, even like with a fully built stock engine, it's still crazy and it revs past nine. I mean, it's absolutely bonkers and ridiculous with a fully built stock engine with twin turbos strapped onto it. It's just freaking insane. And right here is where I decided that, yeah, I should probably have the aero. If it's going to be this light and it's going to be pushing this much power, I might as well just go ahead and have the aero. I mean, I know it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but if we're trying to beat a Hennessy Venom GT, I'm going to take every advantage I can get. Now, the wheels are very, 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 very light, and I did not have to change them out 
but I actually had a little bit of an idea in mind, and so that's why I changed them out. And the wheels that I that I used didn't add any weight, so that's why I was okay with adding them. I was kind of thinking about doing the Dimag Nine spokes, and then I backed out of the idea and decided to do um, decided to do basically th those crazy like center locked, almost F1 looking wheels, and they're just like oh my god, they just set the they just set the, like, the tone of the car so well, and they look so sinister. And you would kind of never see a Carrera GT with these anyway, so I think they kind of give a cool look. But all in all, that's going to be the setup. And now it's time to head back to the highway with our modified Carrera GT and see what it can do. So hopping in right off the bat, it, it was nuts. It was insane. I tried to ease it off the line. Um, and it, it was just like, nope, we're gonna go. That, that's, that's your only option now. And right into a traffic car, we went. And right off the bat when I started driving it, and I really floored it in third for the first time and felt the acceleration, and yeah, I way overcooked it there, but when I floored it in third and, and, and actually saw that acceleration in game for the first time, I was like, whoa, we might have a chance. It's so fast. It's it's mind-bendingly fast, this car. And you kind of have to, uh, you have to kind of just build one in order to appreciate it. But once you do, once you do, you are in for one hell of an experience. I mean, you really are. And you definitely have to be a little bit more careful with the power now. I mean, I was learning that the hard way by going around the roundabout. I just like to see where the back end starts to kick out, and you kind of realize how little steering angle this thing actually has when you put this much power to it, and you get on the throttle, and then you expect to be able to just counter it really easily, and it's like, ha-ha, you're, you're funny. So, this run was definitely one that I was looking forward to, and you guys will, you guys will definitely see why. Now, getting off the line, I decided not to try anything crazy. I decided I was just going to go ahead and ease it out in first gear and shift it to second let it spin just a little bit and then get into third it was spinning just a tad in third but once you get into fourth you're good and keep in mind this is a stock transmission with stock ratios which makes it so much in my opinion it makes it so much more interesting but we actually beat the venom gt by two miles an hour we ran 223 which a battle like that is literally the sole purpose of this series to make matchups and battles that are that freaking close. And and this was definitely one of them. So if you guys have any suggestions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. And I will see y'all later.